How's it going? My name's Nico. I go by Cointrick and Cointrick Twitch Online. If you want to see more videos like this one, please remember to like and subscribe. Hit that bell so you get notified every time I upload another one of these videos. How's it going? My name's Nico. I go by Cointrick and Cointrick Twitch Online. We're doing a series of two-part videos based on our old Build-A-Bar series, where each week we pick a new themed drink. This week we're doing coffee. In the first part, we show you guys some simple classic drinks uh, in that theme. So we just showed you how to make a espresso shot, how to make a latte, and how to make some cold brew coffee. I can show you guys how to make like regular coffee, but between like French press, drip, and all of these other different kinds of ways to make a, like regular coffee, uh, I feel like that warrants its own video probably later on. So right now in part two, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a cafe cubano and then a dirty spice chai. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a blended coffee drink using some of that cold brew that we made originally in the first video. You guys might be wondering why I have the whisk here, right there. Uh, we are gonna need that for this video. We're gonna need it for the Cafe Cubano because it is a form of pulling an espresso shot. So let me pack the shot, we're gonna pull it. I'm gonna walk you guys through how this is different from pulling a regular espresso shot. So like any espresso shot, you're gonna to wanna to start by getting your grind. out, check the top of your grind, tamp it down. The main difference between how a regular espresso shot is pulled and how a cafe cubano is pulled is going to be what you do to the espresso as it's pulling and you guys will see a little bit about what I'm talking about here. Once you have your coffee ground and tamped down, put it in your machine, grab whatever vessel you're going to be pouring this in, start pulling your shot. Now here's the thing about making Cafe Cubano. As that's pulling and you don't have a whole lot of time to do this, you're gonna wanna grab a second vessel. And hopefully you guys can see this. Siphon off some of this espresso as it's pulling. You don't need a whole lot. You actually need just like a tiny, tiny bit. And then to this, you're gonna add a little bit of just sugar, regular white sugar. And this is what our whisk is for. If you have something like a milk foamer or something like that, that works better. But basically what you're trying to do is break down all of that coffee. Ghee, I think we can get a good, a good shot of this on camera too, because what's gonna happen is the coffee is gonna bubble up a whole lot. So if you look at this, you're gonna wanna do this kind of like relatively vigorously. You should notice the espresso bubbling up, getting kind of creamy, getting kind of foamy, but that crema, that lighter layer on top should remain intact as you do this. The whisk that I'm using here isn't super ideal. Uh, if you have something like a milk foamer or something like that, or an automatic whisk, that's gonna work a lot better. And then you add the rest of your espresso shot here on top. You do that just a little bit to make sure that it's incorporated. Let's see how it tastes. It's actually, surprisingly, it's not overly sweet. It's just sweet enough to cut the bitterness off of the coffee. It's literally that simple. That is a Cafe Cubano. It's a little bit harder if you don't have a whisk or if you don't have like specialized tools on hand. It takes a lot of time to get that sugar to actually break down and incorporate into such a small amount of hot espresso. So the next thing I'm gonna show you guys how to make is a dirty chai latte. Make sure you've got your whisk or something to mix because I'm gonna be using powdered chai rather than a chai extract or a chai syrup. I'm also not making chai from scratch because I feel like that also needs to be a future video in and of itself. Nico, what is a dirty chai? A dirty chai is just a regular chai latte or what's normally referred to as chai masala uh, made with a shot of espresso. So the first thing I've already gone ahead and done, I have the shot of espresso, it's still hot. The crema is dissipated, which is fine because we're gonna be adding cream and a bunch of stuff to this anyway. Once you have this and while it's still hot, you're gonna to wanna to mix in that dry chai or whatever chai extract or whatever that you have at home. At my old coffee shop, we ended up doing, I believe about uh, a half an ounce to a full ounce of this stuff in each drink, which is quite a lot because there is a ton of sugar in here. And if you're wondering exactly what is in chai masala, which is technically what this is, because the word chai actually just directly translates to tea, 
so to call this chai tea would be the same as calling it tea tea. What is in chai masala, what's in this powder and your spice chai extract, uh, they're going to be baking spices like cinnamon, cardamom, nutmeg, uh, all of those things with a little bit of black tea and bergamot, as well as a few other things like some sweetener, like sometimes sugar, but usually honey or something like that. that is cool, cool. Once you have that fully incorporated, put this away, make sure no air or anything can get in there, set it aside, and we're going to steam some milk. There isn't anything like a crema on this drink because you have to break up the espresso shot to mix the rest of the ingredients in there. So we're not gonna aim for latte art, but I am gonna steam the milk like I'm trying to make latte art because like I mentioned in part one, if you can make latte art, that's a sign of making almost perfect milk. Right. Oh, it smells so good. Reminds me of my old coffee shop a lot. We may, we may be able to get lots of air on this. <laughs> I got a cloud. Cool, cool, cool. So, spiced chai latte, dirty spiced chai latte. Cheers, let's see how it tastes. It just, it reminds me of like, all of my favorite fall flavors. Uh, and by the way, if you wanted to make that a dirty pumpkin spice chai, literally the only thing that you need to do is add like store-bought canned pumpkin puree to that. And I would recommend adding maybe an ounce to two ounces. Stir it in when you're adding the chai to the espresso and you'll have a, pumpkin, a dirty pumpkin spice chai. Or make it without the espresso and you'll have a pumpkin spice chai. The last drink that we are gonna make and probably going to be uh, the one that's most visually appealing and maybe the most annoying to make for you guys, depending on what you have at home. You're not gonna need this for it, but you are gonna need some kind of blender. This is most baristas and bartenders nightmares for a whole lot of different reasons. I'll explain those as I'm making the drink. So, first thing we're gonna want to make a blended coffee drink, the, the one that we're making, and what we're making, by the way, is gonna be a blended mocha. We're gonna need some cold brew coffee, you can make it with iced coffee, but cold brew is gonna be a little bit more concentrated, so it's not gonna be as watered down and you won't need as much of it to get coffee flavor rather than just water. So we're gonna be using cold brew coffee. This is the same cold brew that we made uh, in the first video. I feel like serving it in uh, in this like beer chalice that I have because I don't know, it reminds me kind of like an old school diner kind of vibe, like a smoothie or a milkshake. You have that, you have this, you're gonna need some chocolate. A big thing about making a blended drink is you're gonna need some, some sort of powder to make sure that all of the ingredients stay incorporated and homogenous. Otherwise your drink will separate out. This is why, and Coffee Fanatics has pointed this out on TikTok, this is why you can't just take the store-bought, like chilled, bottled, Frappuccino Starbucks drink uh, and put it in a blender and call that a Frappuccino because it doesn't have those powders. That drink will separate out into ice and then water and then coffee and flavors and stuff at the very bottom, which is very gross. We have some milk chocolate powder. Some chocolate sauce. So once you have all these ingredients, what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna fill whatever your vessel is all the way up with whatever ice you have on hand. Regular ice, don't use pebbled ice, don't use crushed ice, don't use like small cubes. See how that's filled uh, all the way up to the top and there's a little piece like a little tail sticking out. Basically that means that right about here where the ice should end, if, if this all fit in the cup, uh, that's where I'm gonna wanna measure the rest of this stuff, which is gonna make sense here in a second. Take the vessel that you're gonna be blending everything in. Start measuring out your powders. Like in the dirty chai, you're gonna wanna do about an ounce to, if you're making a whole lot of this, you can use two ounces of this powder. The powder is really there as a binding agent. It'll add a little bit of flavor, but it, you shouldn't get a powder that adds a whole lot of sweetness. And then you're gonna want about an ounce and a half to two ounces of this syrup. This is a high sugar drink. Quick cheat code, if you're using a measuring utensil like this and your chocolate sauce gets stuck in there, use a little bit of your cold brew to loosen it up. Yeah. 
hit that with some hot water to make sure it's clean. Clean up, clean up, everybody do your share. You'd be surprised how many bartenders don't know that song. Once you have that stuff in there, you can swirl it around a little bit. Take your cold brew, take your ice, fill it up virtually until the ice is all covered. Once the ice starts floating, then add everything in here. I just wanna make sure nothing is stuck on my spoon. I'm gonna take my blades here, put this all together. And you might hear a couple seconds of this, but we're gonna try and cut it out because it is super loud. Look at that milkshake. If you want, you can top this with whipped cream. I'm not a huge whipped cream fan. Uh, at my coffee shop, we would do that and then drizzle it with some chocolate sauce, but let's see how this tastes. All of these flavors are just like really fond memories for me. I don't have a whole lot of coffee drinks anymore because I haven't worked at a coffee shop. One of the things that I used to do and one of the things that kept me in the good graces of everybody that I worked with, because we had an espresso machine and we always had milk and sometimes had coffee on hand, uh, I, would, I would just offer to make lattes for people. If anyone was having a down day, uh, if back of house was really swamped, I would just make them shots of espresso, make them lattes, cafe cubano. So this is a skill that goes a long way it doesn't just entertain a lot of people, it impresses a lot of people, and many people are thankful for this kind of drink. And you don't have to get them drunk, which is nice. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you all for tuning in, sticking around, showing up. Thank you for all of your help and support. Hopefully I've been helpful and supportive for you all as well. If you learned anything during this video, please remember to like and subscribe and comment what drinks you wanna learn how to make at home. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, you guys.